idea. We can recharge here. See what he's got on him. I got something. your press credentials from Parker, but you must have caught ill the day they explained how a newspaper layout should look, if they ever explained it at all. This collage you left on my desk looks like it was slapped together by a blind child. You left no room for inserts, adverts, ears, or bleed. You know the problem with you, Parker? You're so caught up with the substance, you forget that above all, it needs to look pretty! Screwdriver. This should come in handy.
last word of it. This isn't how I thought I'd spend the eve of the arrival. Oh, Senor Octavo. I am so sorry. I must come to terms with the fact that I'm at least partially responsible for your death. And now I sit here, adding insult to injury, writing more lies on the wall of your coffin. I'm done. I've ruined enough lives. I refuse to taint their afterlives too. You've reached Matty Said at the morning bell. Please leave a message. Hello? Your stupid machine is on. No, no, I'm stopping it. Hold on. There we go. Murray, how are you, darling? You lord, son. Ah, not well, I guess. I just spent the last hour getting slapped down by the headmaster because you thought it would be cute to create some pointless controversy around my drinking habits. You stupid, phony. Phony? Well, if that isn't richer than the royal family. You're the phony, me, Ray. You with your bogus name and manufactured accent. I am curious. How exactly did you manage to cultivate such a lovely and exotic French patois growing up in Blacksburg, Virginia? Hmm? Miss Prido? Should I call you if you want me to drop the issue, then you'd better drop the act. Ask me why I haven't shared that with the headmaster. What's the matter, darling? Cat got your tongue. Another word about this and I swear to God I will end you. Harold, are you sending me secret messages? Dear Miss Said, let's not pretend the countdown to this day didn't begin the moment we hired you. As a seasoned newsman, I am disgusted to claim you as a colleague. You lack even a modicum of basic journalistic integrity and... and your investigative methods are grotesque and unethical. Ah. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. I have ignored your poorly researched writing for too long. But your article about Treglazov was a new low, even for you. That would... That you would bend truth so plainly in order to defend a man such as him and to do so without even the slightest regard for the reputation of this August newspaper is beyond the pale. Consider this letter your formal termination. I made a compelling argument for metamorphosis. You've been most illuminating. And you've been a delight. Thank you for entertaining this nostalgic old fool for an evening, Miss Say. Please, call me Matty. And the only fool I see is the shaky-handed barman over there who went stingy on my gin. Time for one more. I think another time. After this flight, I have two more, and then another lengthy voyage beyond that. I trust we'll meet again. Perchance in metamorphosis. Good evening. Wait. You forgot this, this pendant thingy. You keep it.
key card. <gasps> Leaving so soon? You'll need more than that to get out of here. It's all right. They won't come in here. Apparently, they're afraid of me. Oh, what I'll write about them. Would you like a drink? Or would it corrupt your coding? You're a long way from home. I don't have a home. Do you have a soul? The Greek house have souls. I used to. Until one night, I went to bed with the devil. I woke up regretting it. But I did it again the next night, and the night after that, and every morning I'd look at what I'd written and issue an apology. But that wore me out. Sincerity is exhausting. I started faking it. As a woman, you learn to fake an apology. As a woman journalist, that's all you end up doing. So what's your story? I'm escaping. Mm. Good luck with that. Do I have a chance? Stupider people than you have gotten further in life with less help. You do have help, right? No. I see. Well, I thought I heard you talking to someone earlier. So what's your plan for getting to the surface? Because there's a pair of armoured Prizrak upstairs who like their jobs too much to let some empty-headed twit with a stolen mobile get the better of them. No offence. None taken. Well, I know a way to remove them. No blood, no violence. You won't have to get your hands dirty. You know what a news office calls their archives? They call it the morgue, the place where old news goes to die. But sometimes we'll bring a story back to life. Sometimes we'll raise the dead. Are you willing to summon a ghost or two? Yes. Then let's see which poor souls we're dealing with tonight. Edwin Chung and David Bowen. There are two data hubs on either side of Terminus, Atlantic and Pacific. Getting to them won't be easy, but you'll manage. Go, now. I don't understand. What do we do when we get to them? We? Me. Right. Find the Pacific and Atlantic servers. I'll call you when you get there. This key card, compliments of Maddie Sade, operates the service elevator going to the surface. That was unexpected. Can we trust her? I'd like to think so. After all, she let me keep the key card. Or maybe she just forgot I had it. Well then. It would seem Miss Sade is stewing in a broth of remorse and hard alcohol tonight. However, she does have a solid plan for dispatching those two Prizrak at the service elevator. I'd advise you and the girl to follow Maddie's lead on this. Drive safely. Apparently Zager's death video has disappeared. This coming from my source in the Prizrak. More likely, they just didn't care for the ending, so they're doing reshoots. 
as you know in this day and age, nothing's ever truly gone. Track down the unedited version. I would love to compare it to Hair Director's Cut. Okay, vent. The screwdriver broke. A Zager room. Ugh. It really smells in here. I'm surprised the morning. A new taser. A subject near to Zager's heart. He wrote about this very issue in the Poisoned Manifesto. As with everything, Zager saw it as a government cover-up in need of undressing. Zager kept lists like this one, to determine where citizens in Metamorphosis stood in case a revolution broke out. I guess I should be relieved he put me on the good side. That would be Derringer's personal office chair. When it went missing, Derringer immediately blamed me. I guess we can close the book on that mystery now. However, the mystery of how Zager got it through the vent remains unsolved. Somehow, I'm still alive. It's missing. Someone's been in here. I swear it. I know. I know. I know what you're probably thinking. And yeah, I am paranoid. But you'd be paranoid too if everyone was always out to get you. I swear. I swear I put these pictures away before I left. And I scattered everywhere. Someone was here. I can't stay here. Whoever it was, whoever messed with my stuff, they'll be back. I had to leave this place. I suppose it was only a matter of time. Keeping a secret from the overseer is hard enough. Keeping a secret room, well, it's nearly impossible. I'm gonna have to burn this spot and move on now. This is a life, right? Show me a revolutionary who isn't living in their own and I'll show you a revolution destined to fail. Because when that fateful day arrives and technology betrays us, I'll be well suited for survival. I'll set up shop, string some tin cans together, and I'll start spreading that gospel. But for right now, I can't sell that. I can't. Gotta stay hungry, gotta stay lean. Living in shadows is a necessity in my line of work. But you know what it's like? I'm like that rat scratching around behind your walls. Until one day, you don't hear him anymore. And you sit there and you hope he went silent because he's dead. But in your heart of hearts, you know that rat ain't dead. He's off somewhere. Know your enemies. Now, I'm not talking about those that come at you with clenched fists, but with open arms. I'm not talking about that creepy old Victorian on the hill with the rickety shutter and the murder crows perched on the roof. No, that's too easy to see. I'm talking about the charming Mediterranean split level with the 2.5 kids in the yard. The one that looks warm and inviting, and you don't realize you're in a frame until you step inside 
and that big door swings shut on you. That is the real house of horrors. Not Derringer. Not Derringer. A blind man can see through his brand of corporate evil. I'm talking about Treglazov. I'm talking about his mouthpiece, Maddie Sade, a resident journalist. A woman who's literally in bed with the overseer. Or has been. People talk. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know what kind of journalist she was on the outside, but she certainly sold her soul a thousand times over in here. And what makes her so insidious is that she's too damn pretty. She's the plastic that'll melt first and cause a grease fire when the revolution heats up. She tells her lies through a megawatt smile. But for now, she's more dangerous than Derringer or any of those masked chumps. Even Mireille and all her empty promises have got nothing on Maddie. Actually, bad example. Mireille has got something on everyone. I've seen the files. You know? That gives me an idea. Qualms about winding up on the wrong end of a gun. We all go someday. What scares me is what they do to me after I'm dead. Maybe they leave my body intact. Make an open casket martyr out of me. That ain't likely. See, I think the chances are that they're going to cremate me and burn me like a stack of banned books. And then they'll take the propaganda machine out for a victory lap and scatter my ashes like so much confetti in a ticker tape parade. Because who doesn't love a parade, right? Who doesn't love a parade? Well, I don't. Listen. Kids. I don't know what Treglazov has in store for you, but whatever he gives you going forward, it's too little, too late. Because he's already taken the best of you. He's taken your identity. That's what this place does. It's what men like the Overseer do. They remove your right to privacy. And they leave you afraid to speak your mind. Pretty soon. There's no mind left to speak from. And without a point of view, you've got nothing. And you might as well be dead. Well, I'm still alive. And while there's still fire in my heart, and a dangerous amount of wild turkey in my veins, I'm going to prepare for my own afterlife. I'm going to write my own obit. I'm going to get out in front of the old man's propaganda machine, and I'm going to stand there like the tank man and see that man square, unyielding, unmoving. Too often, history is written by bad men, but not my history. Not my history. Not tonight. Tonight, I tell my own story. Even if it kills me. Zager here. Today, all Prisrak were required to report to the reading room for a mandatory audience with the Overseer. Wait, I'm sorry, correction. The few and the proud 
were pleasantly surprised to find themselves graced by a visit from the Big Cheese himself. <laughs> his Majesty treated our hometown heroes to a few select passages from his manifesto. And after all the applause, he even sat down to sign a few copies. So about this time, I'm off and wandering the halls, doing a bit of reconnaissance, when some FOB Prizrak found me and dragged me along. As luck would have it, I had a manifesto with me. But it wasn't any old manifesto. It was mine. The edited version, where the pages are filled with righteous invective and disciplined truth. Like I've said before, my manifesto is the old man's death warrant. A summons for all the evil he's wrought into this place and beyond. Well, at least it will be once I can crank out enough copies. I'm <laughs> kind of running a one-man opera here. Uh, <coughs> where was I? Oh, yeah. So, all of a sudden, here I am, being hustled up to the podium to meet the man himself. And before I can hide the book, he snatches it out of my hands, opens it up to the first page. Behind the mask, I'm white as a sheet. I'm waiting for him to look down to see my, you know, improvements. I froze. And he just smiles, that big plastic smile at me, and kisses me as John Hancock, under the words, best wishes. <laughs> so he hands it over. Off I go, and, no, well, here I am. I wonder if that smug Treglazov could appreciate the irony of signing his own death warrant. I know I do. I have a treat for you today, kids. Today, I have got a book review for you. No, it's not the manifesto. It's one of the overseer's earlier efforts a little self-help manual from the late 90s with this rather dubious title. Yeah, here it is. Defrag Your Mind, The Pursuit of Happiness in a Computer Age. <laughs> this could be the biggest waste of printed pages ever to burden a bookshelf. I mean, this <laughs> makes Mein Kampf look like Anne of Green <laughs> Gables. Now on page one, he states, and I'm quoting here, Disorganization is the single greatest threat to the continued existence of modern society. So, not genocide, not nuclear proliferation, not government oppression, not Wall Street. Clutter! <laughs> Just, oh, man. <laughs> I wish you could see this. This... It's got to be the ugliest dust jacket photo I've ever seen. Awful tie, worse haircut, nice sweater, jerk. This book starts by reminding us that we're all essentially supercomputers with an emphasis on the word super. It's cute. Next, he explains how we can simplify our lives, be even happier by cleansing our minds of thoughts that are... are uh, hold on. Impure on the level of psychological honesty and f impure on the level of psychological honesty and filled with resentment and spiritual shallowness. Blah 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 -de blah. Basically, this book is all about the whitewashing of the ugly truth and recasting it as beautiful lies. He thinks clutter's the problem. Well, I'd hate for him to see this place. Though, on second thought, maybe I should invite him over sometime for the glasnost. Blow his mind. Literally. <sighs> Alright, I gotta go. This is Zager, reminding you, don't trust anybody. Not even me. Sager here. Now, to all of you budding revolutionaries, I wanted to give a word of advice. The best way to fight fire is with more fire. 
Why do protests fail? Well, protests fail because the protesters bring knives to a gunfight. Nobody listens to a knife. If you want to get the Prizrak's attention, you need to learn to speak their language. And a charged taser or a full canister of P0 says plenty more than the verse chorus verse of Kumbaya. I mean, what are you going to do? Kill them with kindness? Good luck. A revolt should be revolting. Violence is the only language these men speak, and brutality is their only currency. So pay them back with the business end of a taser. Well, they'll feel it in the morning. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I have been tased and pepper sprayed more times than I care to remember. <laughs> I was at a WTO protest once. I got hit in the eyes with so much capsaicin, it melted my <laughs> contacts. It hurts, and that's the point because it hurts them too. Listen, the uprising begins the moment you are willing to fight fire with fire. This is what you have to do. Destiny's online too, so pick up the phone already. This is Sager telling you not to say peace because peace is for chumps. The only thing you're in charge of are the thoughts crashing around in your head. <coughs> Everything else is beyond your control. But there are those who believe control can be rebranded, repackaged as participation, and that by doing this, the people will fall in line. See, they believe our actions can be made predictable, predetermined. They think they're God. They play the part, but they're nothing like God. You know, they do, however, share a thing or two with the devil. Our fearless leader here in Metamorphosis, for example, like the devil, he goes by many names. Sir, Treglazov, Headmaster, Overseer. He's never met a man whose will he didn't try to bend the way a prism bends light, or break a man the way the gauchos break a horse. But the more he wraps the reins tighter in his small, meaty, sweaty little fists, the more they slip through his fingers. Because the overseer, he doesn't know that a man cannot be tamed. A man cannot be controlled. And to drive a man toward domestication is to drive him over the edge, as my ex-wives can attest to. A man beyond that cliff is pure chaos. Endless. Terrifying honest. Chaos is a plain dealer. Now, the overseer has a slight obsession with purity, if you haven't noticed, but control ain't pure. It's oily and unctuous and slithery and full of deceit and lies. Now, chaos, well, that's as pure as mountain spring water, as right as rain. The old man is oil, and I'm water. So it's no wonder we don't mix so well. So I say, it's time we give our fearless leader a taste of real purity. Right? Let's rain down chaos in this place and wash away all the lies. This is Zager reminding you, don't trust anyone. Not even me. Okay. Zager here. Gonna try a different format tonight. We're gonna... Hey! Sit. No, no, just sit there. It's fine. It's all going to be fine. All right, we're going to switch things up a bit, and uh, yours truly is going to conduct an interview. <clears throat> you may know my first guess from such crimes against humanity as the recalibration of innocent children and the rape and murder of privacy. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big Zager Radio Hour welcome to one of the Ark Prisrak from Terminus Level 2. <laughs> What? I can't understand. What? Oh, right, yeah, sorry. Here. Yeah, sorry about that. It pulls off the skin somehow. Okay, so you're here, and you're here. It's a big show, so, uh, introduce yourself. What's your name? Come on, come on, say something. What's your name? your mother. 
is a terrible name. Your parents must have been horrible, horrible people. Okay, just stop, stop. It's okay. Hey, hey, it's okay. Dude, seriously, you're embarrassing me. Stop inching away from the mic. I can't hear you when you do that. Okay, my first question for you, sir. Who are the pre -cals? Huh? Are they clones? Some kind of genetic experiment? Treglazov's illegitimate kids? I, what? I don't know. I don't, I don't have any association with the pre -cals. No association, huh? That's funny because I caught you red-handed beating up a little boy. And yet you're saying no association. That boy. Yeah, yeah, nine! He stole a uniform. He was armed. He was 95 pounds. He's a scared kid. Huh. You want to tell me why Derringer and the lot of you are so worried about one of the pre-cals jumping off this little merry-go-round? It's for the protection. <laughs> right? How's that exactly? Huh? <laughs> this is not going well at all. Do you want some coffee? Question! <laughs> this is how an interview works. You've got to say things, dummy. Look. I... Did you piss your pants? Oh my god, you did. Okay, well, I guess I won't be borrowing your uniform after all. Please, please just stop. Okay, okay. Please. Hang on, just. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, I think that's about all the time we have for today. Next week we'll do a call in show. So, Zigger out. Dude, so unprofessional.